Hello everybody. So um, this week I was tasked to go and create this model. So how did I do it? Um, well, I had a bit of a think and there are several ways of doing it. And um, I'll show you what I ended up with. So first idea was there's a preset in the uh, dynamics thing called a dampener. So I go and create a dynamic object called a dampener. And then the boot parameters for the dampener, I can go and change that. So I go over to here and go to dampener and then go down, 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 down to here. And we can do the amount of folds and we can change that from like, you know, hardly any to quite a lot. And then you've got, you know, blah, 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 stop fillet, fillet segments, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. And then you convert that to a mesh and get rid of the things you don't want. You could do it that way. That's one option. Um, I didn't use that option, but you know, it might get you there in a push. So that's one option. Um, so we're trying to create this, um, and then there's a little caveat later on, which is really interesting. So my next idea was I could try using a loft. So we get the path here, the black line, and we get the shape, and we put the shape along the path, and then we deform it along the path. If I select it and go into uh, loft parameters and go into scale and we make the thing a bit bigger than it currently was and that's ginormous, that's ridiculous and we do that, there we go so we now have, let's make this a bit smaller Bloop. and do that, so there we go so that's what we have, but the problem is basically Autodesk have not updated the tools inside the, uh, the, the sort of deform area or the scale area of um, of loft since probably max 3 in 1999 so we don't have uh, a mass way of adding points easily and predictably we don't have a way of scaling those points um, and that would go along the lines of selecting all these and scale these down so they all fit or just typing in a value here and they all go to the right value so if I type this in, see so I can't even type into this I have to select one then I can type into it. So you get the uh, height and its location, basically. So this would be hands-on and really boring, especially when you need to do lots and lots of folds. I can see I did a few, I went, this is gonna do my head in. So I can do it, but it's a bit, yeah. So lofting was not my preferred method. Next idea was I would use a lathe. So, because it's circular shape, shaped, so it's ideal. And all I need to do is lots and lots of things on the line. So I'll select my line here, and oh, we've already got them. Um, let me just go and make a new line then. Let's uh, actually, you know what? Let's just go into the line, and basically get rid of all these points. So you create a line, which gives you start and end points. And you want to go and divide it up. So I can go into here, select this particular thing, and go to du, 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 divide by 100, and it will divide it. So a line, lave it, you're sort of done, you know. But the main problem is you can have a lots of hundred, lots of points, but you don't. What you really want to do is select every other point. And in the line tools, I can't see an easy way of selecting every other point other than going in and manually selecting a point. Let's go use the selection tool and then select another point and then select another point. Oh, I've done it wrong. Hang on, select that point, hold down Alt, deselect that point, hold down Control, select that point. You know, this will take a while. And um, there's got to be an easier way of doing this because this is, you could do it this way, just going to take a long time. You know, I need to get all the way along to here doing that and then move them a bit to make this jiggity jaggedy looking thing here so I thought well that's annoying let's not do it that way then so my next idea was I would make a plane with a hundred segments so plane and a hundred segments there we go and then go to edit poly and select vertex and then I'll go here and I'll select two vertices and I'll drop down my modeling tool thing with a little button bloop and I would select uh, dot loop. Bada bing, bada boom. It's just selected every other 
thing, which is perfect. Um, if I go into left view, there we go. And then if I go and uh, hit move, which is W key, and I'm in view mode, that's good. I can then do that. So we cool. Only problem is you can't leave a plane, which is a bit annoying, isn't it? So what could we do then? Well, my idea would be I'll go and select all these edges, and then you can then say dun, 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 somewhere in this myriad of things you can do, you can create shape from thingy. Create shape, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, call it state. Alright, so if I select this and move it down, we now have this shape here. I can hardly see it. Right, so we now have that shape. So we can easily select the, uh, the up and the down of it and edit things and then leave it. <coughs> so with that, <coughs> we can then go and leave this shape. So what I've done here is I've got the shape and I've basically copied the shape twice and scaled it down to get the, the crunched up ends and then attached them and then hit lave and that will give us a laved shape. And we've sort of done and hit turbo smooth and we've sort of we're sort of there. <coughs> Next thing we need to do is deform this along a path. So with that I have created a path, he says, here as we can see. There's my path, and it comes out the other end. And basically, I've got this guy, which is got a path deformed binding, and we're done. That's it. So if I go out of that, and I select the path here, and I select like these two bits and move them, everything moves, we're cool. And this way, we can easily sort of, you know, fiddle with stuff and get it exactly where we want to put it. And that gets us our shape. So the last problem we I've had with that was, you know, I was told we needed a black one of these things, so I built that, blah 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 blah, all done, all groovy, until he decided to say, actually, you know what? The inside needs to be a different colour. The inside needs to be silver and the outside needs to be black. So I've just done two colours here. So if I was gonna do that inside blender. Um, I've got a thicken tool, but it doesn't do a selection, it just thickens it. In Modo 701 I've got, there's a thicken tool, it just thickens it, it doesn't give you a selection. In Max, we don't have a thicken tool, because we were the first one to have anything useful like that, and we called it a shell tool. So we can add a shell, but we can give, hang on, we can uh, go into the shell properties, and we can give material IDs to the inside and the outside and even the edge if we wanted to I haven't done the edge we don't really need it so with that over here I've got a multiple sub-object material with outside and inside and that basically concludes my little video that gets me rocking and rolling so um, once done I then snapshot it to turn it into a mesh and then throw it into Blender because that's where I render stuff. I render things in Blender now. And that concludes my highly interesting how do you make a sort of duct tube thing. And that's how you do one. So a bit of head scratching, but we got there in the end. Right, that will do. See you later.